So the first poem I'm going to do is called Starry Night, and it's about one of my favorite uh, artists ever, Van Gogh. Yeah. And um, the reason I'm reading this is, is uh, Tupac and Emily Dickinson say, you know, don't take fame as what you think it is. Take things that nourish your soul and make them the important part of your life. <clears throat> Starry Night. A creative heart obsessed with satisfying this dormant and uncaring society. You have given them the stars at night, and you have given them bountiful, beautiful sunflowers. But for you, there is only contempt, and though you pour yourself into the fame and present it so foully, this world cannot accept your masterpieces from the heart. So on the starry night, you gave to us, and you took away from us the one thing we never acknowledged, your life. T.S. Eliot says, these fragments I have shored against my ruins. In somberness, the face unfolds into fragments. Shored against the ruin from abuses loud, because that is the way it is. Head down in shame and giving up, and this is enough. From watching mother suffer, from watching grandma suffer, from a cycle of fear, sear fate with wisdom, cut a new path from umbilical cord to umbilical cord. Let silical ruin unfold. Daughter does not need abuse, doesn't see abuse, doesn't hear abuse. Her face uplifted in youthful triumph. Four faces, four generations of women merge inside, reflect stories back. One mirror, clarity, <coughs> art, verse, love, praise the beauty, Praise the beauty of daughter's face, forgiveness in her grace. Unfold abuse like silk in origami. In some beautiful modern ballet, she dances the ruin of ancestral faces. Let them escape, emerge as whole in face. Thank you. <laughs> Silence. <clears throat> Mother Teresa says that the trees and grasses grow in silence, that the sun, moon, and stars move in silence, and that if I listen, I'll hear God in silence. So I am silent inside, listening insistently, but I can't embrace the silence, can't hear God. I whisper, what if the trees, grasses, Sun, moon, and stars are not quiet. What would they say? Silence is choked deep in sadness. It holds roots with the shadows of trees, and I'm oblivious, oblivious to life. As it moves, as my daughter grows, as my sadness digs deep within, I'm unable to hear. Can't hear my daughter's tears welling in her immaculate brown eyes. Can't hear her calling me, calling me, Mom! Mom, aren't you listening to me? I just stare off blankly into nothing. I have completely pushed her sound out. What kind of mom am I to ignore? Only seeking a place to rest in the arms of peace on my own, not absent from comfort, not hidden in the hymn of some long abuse of knowing that I've never been wanted until the birth of my daughter. And her cry woke me. Her ball broke part of the silence. It still penetrates the core of me. And with the slow motion, the early morning pink sun rises above the sandias. The sun's jagged face is blinding me. Her quiet, persistent eye. I drive to work, radio off trying to find the balance within silence, like the motion of a billowing white thunderhead moving away from the bright sun. I want to hear the trees, grasses, flowers, sun, moon, and stars as they whisper back, everything is going to be all right. 
A tangerine tree melts fire into sun, eliminates ash, empty solitude, dreaming yellow ocean waves defy nature. All the while the earth spins, I stand still. Like Maria in West Side Story, the scene blurs, seeing Tony across the dance floor. Love is so rosy, accidental meeting, faith seals, the stars blend, satellites in the sky blink. Love dies, tick tock. Time evaporates, memories leaves sorrow in the color of blue lizard tongues and gray desert fields. I will paint my feelings across paper with letters forming words, dotting each I will paint my feelings, retire my camera, burn image. Creating is for the inspired. Thank you. Mm. I'm going to finish with this one poem that was written in 1659 by Emily Dickinson. And um, I do this lesson with Tupac and Emily, um, both seeking fame, both dying before their time, and both of them becoming beyond famous after death. All right. And so I'm going to end with this. Fame is a fickle food upon a shifting plate, whose table once a guest but not the second time is set, whose crumbs the crows inspect, and with ironic caw flat past it to the farmer's corn, men eat of it and die. Mm -hmm.